Hey guys, as here at Shield Canine. So today, it's a snowy day, and also I decided that today I'm going to go on a bitch walk. I haven't gone on a gone on a bitch walk in quite a long time, and my lineup of females has changed somewhat. And to be honest, none of these females have been together yet. Okay, so um, almost every female except Isa that I had previously um, is has has been retired and they're they're in pet homes now. So I have a whole new lineup of, of females and I really don't know how they're going to get along. It's been a long time since I've had time to do a bitch walk. Don't worry, they have been walked individually by my kennel staff, um, but they just haven't all gone together. So I'm going to try it today with a couple of them. Um, I'm going to take Isa, I'm going to take Dizzy, who lives in the house with me, um, and then I'm going to take uh, the new uh, one of my new bitches, Tiny, and um, we're going to go like that. So. You know, people often ask me, how do you introduce dogs? Now, look, the ideal way to introduce two dogs to each other is they kind of live in a state of structure around one another. So if I have, for instance, I'm going to bring a new dog into my home with my two large dogs that are already in the home and my one small one, um, what I would do was the new dog would come in and, and would be on the place and, you know, everything would be always structured. I wouldn't let them just kind of go at it and figure out who's boss. That's not what I would do. Now. I'm not going to follow my own advice this time. I am going to kind of wing it because I really, we don't have time. Like I, I, I want to go for a walk today. So I'm going to take some risks. Um, I'm going to put the uh, flat collar on Tiny because I don't know Tiny and Tiny doesn't know me all that well. And I'm going to put a long line. She's wearing an e-collar because I do know that she's had some work with the e-collar. Tiny does have her BH. So, you know, she does have actually some obedience training on her. I have no idea how she's going to react with the with the strange females. So I'm going to pull Tiny out. Um, and then I also have my soft stick here, right? Good thing about the soft stick, it's a great way to kind of, um, if you know what you're doing with it, you can break up a fight. We'll put it that way. And you're not going to injure the dog, right? So it's one of those things. I know, oh my God, he uses a stick. Yeah, I do. I do. And you know what? I don't walk away with holes in my hands like everybody else who gets involved in dog fights. Also, hopefully there are no dog fights. So let's get after it. First things first, I'm gonna pull Tiny out. Dizzy, go. And Dizzy's not allowed to be involved at this portion. You come here. You come here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a flat collar now on Tiny. Good. And now I have control of her. And I'm, oh. <laughs> I think she, uh, did she smudge the lens, right? See, with male, male females, they always get along, but bitches, believe me, bitches can be tender. Hey, be nice. And Tiny, even though she's small, ah, no. Even though she's small, believe me, she can do some stuff. So I'm gonna let this one out. And believe, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to uh, break something up. Just give me a sec here. Good. Let's go. Come on. Hey, don't do that. Come on. Good girl. Good. Be nice. Everybody nice. It's the speed, right? It's that. It's the speed and the arousal. That's what gets everybody. That's what gets her going. So she has to learn. <laughs> He has to learn to deal with that, right? Now, contrary to popular belief, you do not fix this type of problem with an e-collar, right? This is what I've done. Just that, right? It's enough. It's not about pain. Pain ain't gonna work. Ah! She just tried to give this bitch a dominant kind of bite over the back of the shoulders. Now, needless to say, I have control on these two a little bit. They listen to me, they know me. I me. come on. Hey! They know me. This is the one that I don't really have any control or respect from. So, when I do the walk, in the beginning, I'm not gonna turn her loose around them because I know when they all start running, she's gonna jump on one of them and try to fight, right? So right away, we're kind of starting with a little more. He's a, come on. Starting with a little more kind of respect from her. Hey, you don't do that. And I'm gonna follow up. The important thing too to notice too is with Dizzy, Dizzy is actually, um, uh, has not been around 
these females either. And you can see Dizzy's the cement. She's the lowest one. <laughs> they make her nervous. Like when Isa comes comes running after her, that's not fun for her. She's like more nervous than anything else, right? So for those of you that are wondering, right? Obviously, I've, I've done some pretty harsh corrections as far as maybe what you might be used to on YouTube, right? But look at the dog's behavior. She's going for a walk, right? She's going for a walk. Now I know the cookie pushers. Oh, we can, you would, if you did this with the cookies and you know, you gave her a treat and here and the, the threshold, yeah, whatever. At the end of the day, you know, I, <laughs> when you're dealing with the kind of dogs that I deal with, especially the working dogs, they're another level of intensity, right? They're not, they have type A personalities. If they didn't have type A personalities, I wouldn't want to deal with them. With the exception of Dizzy. Dizzy doesn't have a type A personality. <laughs> but these German Shepherds <laughs> certainly do. So, you know, you have to have that ability to just say, hey, knock it off. And what's the, what's the reward? What's the, uh, the, the pot of gold, so to speak? The pot of gold is we get to go for a walk. So now if I do this a few more times, and for those of you wondering, you know, you, if you see my earlier bitch walks, like I had like five or six of them all together, this is how I did it. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't magic, right? There wasn't some magic stuff. It was me holding them accountable for their behavior and teaching them that I'm the arbiter of what is good and what is bad, right? So a lot of people think that, you know, there's like some, you use the e-collar, you use something. No, it's just simply, hey, I'm setting things up. I'm smart. So I put a leash on this one because I know that this is the one I have the least control over. And she's the one that has the least um, experience with other dogs, right? So I've got that. And then the other thing, I've got my soft stick so I can issue a correction that's not going to injure the dog, but also is going to effectively stop the behavior. And no, this is not how you teach a dog to do something. So if your dog isn't sitting, you don't whack him over the head with a stick. That's not the solution. Hey! Right? And I follow up with all those behaviors. Anytime, anytime she goes after another dog and tries to bite it on the side of the head, I give her a correction. Good. Now I don't... Right? And a lot of people say, oh, the dog, the dog's just going to be afraid of you, and blah, blah, blah. She's not afraid, especially once we have some experience. She understands that there's rules. The only time you need to be afraid is when you think about biting another bitch in the face. Then you should be afraid because I don't want that, right? That's a trip to the vet. That's all sorts of problems. And she just doesn't know how to deal with the other females around her being aroused, right? So... <laughs> I have a couple other girls that I'm glad I didn't bring on this walk because especially with uh, Tiny, it would have been a little bit too much. You know, it's funny, you bring, if I, I guarantee if I'd brought a male on this walk, there wouldn't have been a single problem with Tiny. It's just other bit, when you bring a bunch of bitches together, you're gonna get bitchy behavior. And same thing, if I brought like three males, believe me, I'd have a bit of a problem. So, for those of you wondering, how do I get to the place where I can walk you know, five strong dogs with each other, right? With the exception of Dizzy. Dizzy's not super strong. Um, then, hey, hey! Even that, right, it's it's play. Hey, eyes up. Even that is play, but I recognize it. I say, ah, getting a little bit far, you know? It's a bit too much. Dizzy's feeling a little bit cornered, right? So, I immediately tell Isaac to knock it off. And I will give her a little e-collar nick if I have to, because she knows the e-collar and she knows me and I have that control. I guarantee you with Tiny, if I put the e-collar on her when she tried to go after another dog, it would just be gas on the fire. It wouldn't help in any way, right? So, Isa, 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 Isa. Good, and there's an e-collar correction. Her chasing, she was chasing her a little bit too intense, right? You gotta watch this stuff when you're managing a group of them. Now look, if I took them out every day for the next three weeks, I'm sure, you know, it would be a lot easier, a lot less corrections needed. But this is what's involved, guys, you know? 
I like to give you guys the real outlook, the real dog training. So you guys have a good understanding of, you know, kind of, um, you know, what the rules are. A lot of people tend to overcomplicate dog training. So you can see again, when things are calm, look at Tiny's body language. She's a happy, happy bitch. When they get excited, that excitement, that arousal hypes her up. And then she causes, she, it causes her to, to react and to try to bite them. The other thing too you'll notice is when she pulls on the leash, right? She's also much more likely to be reactive. So that's something to keep in mind. But you see here with this nice little calm walk, she's okay. But when they run, sometimes you see her hackles come up and the hackles isn't only insecurity, hackles also excitement. And excessive arousal is the father of most bad canine behavior. So you want to deal with some, if you want to deal with a group of dogs, this is a big mistake I see. Whenever people run into problems, and you'll always see this, you'll always, hey, Tiny, come here, come here. I know, they'll say, <laughs> yeah, and see, look this. When I was petting her, I have to watch her that she doesn't get on, on, on Tiny, right? Because Tiny isn't ready yet to deal with that, right? So when I pet Tiny, I'm going to actually be a little bit quieter about it, right? She should be so terrified of me, right? Because I corrected her. Instead, she wants to engage with me. Why? Because my corrections are super clear, right? Dizzy, what are you rolling in? Dizzy. Oh my God, I hope she didn't roll in a dead bunny. The foxes kill all sorts of things in here. Dizzy, you better not. You're gonna wrap me up. Okay, so we're gonna do this walk. And you can see this, right guys? Like even the thing that I correct the dog with, I'll pet the dog. Like she wants to play with it now. I'm not gonna play with her with it. Ah, ah, ah. Tiny, ah, ouch, ouch, right? But. I don't create a general, correcting your dog doesn't create a general fear. And that's the big thing, right? Correcting your dog doesn't create a general fear. What it does is it, if you're doing it properly, it creates an understanding from the dog. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. And the, you know, the stick seems harmless, but believe me, once this type of dog has the stick, if another dog tries to take her stick, it's gonna be a fight, right? Ah, ah, tiny, no, no sticks for you. You're not ready yet. Maybe once we have a little more control, she can handle having a stick in her mouth, but uh, not yet, right? So yeah, there's this belief. You, you punish your dog, especially, you know, what I did, right? I whacked her on the head with this, right? Oh my God, she's gonna be so terrified of you. She's gonna be scared. Listen, dogs aren't stupid, right? They know that it's kind of like if you touched a hot stove, right? You're not afraid of the stove all the time. You're just cautious. You understand, look, I have to be careful. There are specific contingencies under which I cannot touch the stove. So if the stove is on, I need to be careful. If the stove is off, I don't need to be careful. You don't see people walking a big wide. I guarantee, how many of you have been burned on the stove? I have, like three times at least. I don't walk in a big wide circle and flinch when I get close to my stove. No, I'm just careful when I'm cooking, right? This is life. Now, you know, and see here, I'm gonna watch this. I allow her to kind of move around and look and kind of get into the, the, the zone. But if she goes too far and says, okay, I'm gonna try and bite you, then it's a problem, right? So you have to always be kind of aware, especially when you're running a group of dogs, because believe me, if they all get into it, I've made the mistake. I've told people in the past, hey, because I used to walk like, I used to have like four or five bitches that we would walk all together. Actually, it was six at a point. You can, you can go back through my YouTube videos and see that, right? And I would tell other people, okay, you know, hey, go take them out. And man, I would just, eyes up, good girl. I would just see them, con like I would see that there, there was constantly fights. And I realized the fights, the fights were happening because these people were allowing small things to become big things. They were missing small behaviors important times where hey okay it's time to recall the dog it's time to break the arousal right watching the dog seeing okay this is evolving from play to something that could actually turn into a fight because playing and fighting are both very high arousal and sometimes you know either someone takes it a little bit too far or you know somebody gets uh, uh, a little bit too uh, intense about things 
and very quickly you can see things change. So you have to be able to judge and look at the dog and say, ah, that's not healthy. I need to stop them, okay? And if you don't know how to do that, then you're gonna have problems. You also need to be really good at suppressing behavior, right? So it's not up to a magical tool and it depends on the dog. For some dogs, you can use the e-collar, give the dog a little nick on the e-collar and say, hey, knock it off. I can do it for Dizzy and I can do it for Isa because both of them respect me, both of them like me and both of them know me, right? So the e-collar correction is almost as if I did the same thing as whack him upside the head with the stick. She doesn't. So the e-collar isn't gonna help me with her, right? Beyond a recall and not when she's amped up. So I guess that's my little spiel on uh, dog behavior. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure this video is probably gonna ruffle some feathers, but you know, I like to give you guys the straight skinny. It is what it is. At the end of the day, guys, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know how I do it. Now again, you're bringing a dog, if I was bringing her into my house and I was like, okay, this is gonna be a long-term thing. She's gonna live with me in my house. She's gonna be part of my family with all my other dogs. Well, then I do it a little different. Like I told you guys, there would be more of a, everybody getting to know you period. But I guarantee you, the corrections would still be necessary.